Welcome to another installment of Tools in Action, our special afternoon session where we engage in conversation with tool developers and experts to talk about latest developments in impact measurement. I'm joined for this session by Rasmus Pries, senior researcher at the Öko Institute in Germany, and he is an expert in product environmental footprinting and life cycle assessment. And this is exactly what we'll be talking about for the next half hour. So welcome, Rasmus. I'm very glad you could join us today. Hello, Norma. I'm very happy to be with you today. Just as an introduction for our audience, could you tell us a few sentences about yourself, about your involvement with LCA and your background? So I mostly work uh, on uh, product and co corporate sustainability issues, uh, in particular carbon footprinting, environmental footprinting, so questions such as what is the carbon footprint of a product, uh, how do you compare them, what does this have to do with a, a company or its supply chain, and how to make room rules for, for such assessments work within companies and also across companies. So to where do, is there common ground to define what a carbon footprint and environmental footprint uh, is? Over the, the past years or also before joining Öko Institute, I've been actively helping to develop the, the carbon footprint uh, standards uh, that we have uh, today and initiated uh, several Cross industry and cross stakeholder platforms and dialogue uh, events to better understand uh, product sustainability issues and facilitate dialogue around these. So let's uh, just jump right in to the topic of life cycle assessment. Life mm -hmm. cycle assessment is one of the most comprehensive and sophisticated methodologies that are available at the moment to assess the impacts of products and also of organizations. What is the basis of life cycle assessment? What is its great potential and its main benefit? So the particularity about life cycle assessment, and as the name say, says, it is about the whole life cycle of a, a product or other system so that we not look at one particular element uh, and try to assess the environmental impact, for example, of the use of a product or the, the production of a product, but uh, the, the whole impact from resource extraction uh, to manufacturing, transport, use, and then disposal of the product. And uh, with this, so we uh, have or, or try to, to gain a better understanding a comprehensive understanding of the environmental impact um, of a system, often products, um, and also it is generally not about just one environmental impact, which we could be interested in, uh, but we also want to gain an understanding also of other important environmental impacts. So is uh, eutrophication an issue in this product or toxicity or uh, extensive water use or resource use? And by taking such an, a comprehensive approach, uh, we, we are able to, to also better manage uh, the, the whole product in, its, in this life cycle uh, to, to minimize environmental impacts and understand where can we take appropriate actions without having trade-offs uh, with, uh, for example, uh, one environmental impact against another or in one supply, like step of the supply chain, we do something without uh, recognizing what it may change elsewhere in the supply chain. So the, the great potential is in the uh, comprehensiveness. So this is the, the, the general idea of life cycle assessment. And, um, uh, and this has been developed, this concept has been developed with, over the years. And when we uh, say life cycle assessment or speak of life cycle assessment, we also generally mean the, the standardized basis for how to conduct life cycle assessment. Uh, so instrumental for life cycle assessments are the ISO uh, standards 14040 and 44, uh, which uh, define what are life cycle assessments, how should they be done, so that we have a common ground for, for, for how to do these. 
you've worked with different stakeholders and implemented quite a lot of uh, life cycle analysis assessments uh, over the years as well. What are those major objectives that specifically companies pursue when they apply life cycle assessments? So uh, that can be, um, can in fact be very different uh, objectives. Generally, it is about decision making. So, for example, in product design, to gain a better understanding of material choices, which materials have which impact on the overall uh, environmental performance of the product, or can also be like decisions on on where to produce a product, uh, or in general to to identify where are hotspots uh, associated with uh, such a product. So when we speak of hotspots, we mean like where is are the biggest environmental uh, impacts. So. Uh, many companies uh, will conduct a, a life cycle assessment and uh, with the objective to really understand, okay, well, where in the whole value chain is the, mo the greatest uh, impact on climate change or on uh, resource consumption uh, or similar. Over the recent years, we have seen also other objectives emerge, that is um, to also consider a life cycle assessment more for external communication to so to make statements or even claims about uh, products in the market to better uh, understand how competitors uh, compare to the own products and uh, also to understand how uh, life cycle assessment uh, is used or can be used for developing specific criteria for example uh, for sustainable products so questions like what is a sustainable product and what needs to be achieved is is like a, a typical like area of, of application for life cycle assessment. The comparability aspect is one that uh, you have stressed quite a lot now. Comparability is, I think, the major driver of the development of the standards for life cycle assessment that you have uh, mentioned earlier. What was the process towards standardization as you have followed it over the past years? And can we expect new standards to emerge uh, in the coming years? Well, first of all, I should say, like for a lot of applications within companies, the, the rules that we have in place now provide a perfect basis for uh, decision making and answering a lot of the, the questions. It's just that they that each assessment needs to define okay what is the specific goal that I'm pursuing here what questions do I want to answer and uh, then the assessment is like designed in such a way to really answer these questions when we have more external applications such as comparing products or providing a basis for uh, green claims uh, or for monitoring and benchmarking of environmental performance, then oh, we need less flexibility in these rules and standards. So to ensure that uh, different companies do not apply different rules or like make very different decisions in how to uh, answer their question. And for this purpose, uh, we see um, standardization efforts taking place to really implement more specific rules for a particular purpose. And this can be, for example, uh, the focus on specific impact categories. So the whole uh, discussion on carbon footprinting uh, that we've had uh, is actually a discussion around uh, the standardization of one aspect in life cycle assessment. Uh, that is the, the climate change impact uh, of product. And um, when we speak of carbon footprinting and the standards that we have developed there, then this really process of defining more specific rules, how to calculate the carbon footprint of a product uh, for that particular impact category. Then we have also the, the aim to, to generally say, uh, well, how does the environmental performance or environmental impact of one product, for example, a bottle of milk, compare to the environmental um, uh, impact of another bo bottle of milk? And this is a very, very difficult question uh, to answer as you then really need to 
for a fair comparison, you really need to to make a lot of decisions uh, on how to calculate that particular environmental impact. So, for example, uh, you will have to to specify how, uh, for example, the agrochemicals such as fertilizers and uh, pesticides are attributed to a particular product in the supply chain, so for the feedstock that you need for feeding your cows. And there you can uh, take very different approaches, select different databases, so like what is the impact of one ton of fertilizer. If you look in one database, you uh, have like for perhaps uh, like one set of impacts and another database, it's like framed a little differently. Uh, and there you need to be very careful, okay, well, uh, how do we actually apply it to th these two products when we want to compare them? For this purpose, uh, we see these different uh, standardization activities going on. And for environmental footprinting, also the, the question then is, okay, well, if I want to compare the environmental impact of one product to the other, the question is, okay, well, how do I compare climate change with biodiversity impacts or uh, water use and so on? So you have to make like some kind of comparison also with these different uh, environmental impacts. And this is also what the product environmental footprint then tries to do to uh, provide a, a common basis and framework how to weigh these different environmental impacts against one another to, to come to an overall score. Um, so the standardization is, is necessary and we see it in, in, in different parts, but it's also not an easy process to implement. We have been talking about life cycle assessment as uh, if it was one consistent methodology. As you just pointed out, obviously it has uh, different variations. There are different members in this cluster or family of methodologies that are all based on life cycle thinking. Maybe to just provide a little bit of a uh, categorization, could you maybe talk us through, uh, say, the three or five most important variations uh, of life cycle assessment in the environmental sphere? I will certainly try to do that, uh, but we need to understand that there are like uh, for very particular questions, uh, very particular answers also in terms of the, of the methods that can be applied. But more widespread uh, standards are definitely uh, the, the greenhouse gas protocol for product and value chain uh, assessments which answered the question of what is the carbon footprint of a product or an organization. And that is definitely widely used in, in, in companies. And very comparable to that uh, particular standard is the correspondent uh, standard in, in the ISO standard family. Uh, so it's ISO 14067, which also defines rules for, for carbon footprinting. So these standards, they have kind of evolved side by side, but are both quite important. Another one is definitely the product environmental footprint process that is currently going on and hosted or initiated also by the European Commission with the main aim to harmonize basis for environmental claims and for the comparison of the environmental impact of products across Europe. So to provide a fair playing field uh, for for such um, information on products. So that is an ongoing process, but uh, as it is already widely implemented and tested, uh, it, it has uh, very practical implications already today. And I should also mention like uh, an, one particular application also is the development of criteria, for example, for eco-labels. So it's not just a method for companies to assess their products, but also to derive specific criteria uh, for uh, eco-labels, uh, specific implementations of life cycle assessment to uh, then uh, identify criteria, benchmarks, and say, okay, well, if this is this criteria is met, then it's justified to, to call this product like an environmentally friendly product. All of these methods are well developed. They are sophisticated, they quantify impact, and this also means that they are methodologically rather complex. 
-hmm. What would you say in your experiences are the major skill sets that are actually needed to carry out a life cycle assessment and in terms of cost or person effort, how much time, money is needed to actually do a useful product environmental footprint, for example? In terms of skills, life cycle assessments indeed need uh, like a set of, of, of skills that usually need to be combined in a, a specific project. You will need a very good understanding of value chain of the product, so from raw material extraction down to use and uh, disposal of a product, possible recycling also of, of components. And that usually means like a certain industry expertise, uh, so someone who really understands the processes for that particular product, so how is it sold on international market or traded, um, how is it transported, are there alternatives, so you need that very specific product focused expertise. Then also a good understanding of, of basic kind of engineering principles and material uh, science principles uh, is also needed. So in the disposal, like uh, what are typical recycling practices uh, that are taking place and what does this mean like in, in physical uh, terms. And then you obviously also need good data management and aggregation skills. Uh, so like one of the main challenges I would say in, in conducting life cycle assessments is to to identify the appropriate data that you need and then really uh, be able to collect it. Uh, usually the most effort goes into finding good quality data for the processes that you that you are looking at um, because you will need data of like perhaps from suppliers in the uh, supply chain on energy consumption for specific processes or for the whole uh, manufacturing plant or the use of certain chemicals uh, in, in these processes. And typically that this, this data is not just sitting there and waiting to be used, but a certain effort is needed to, to find it and then aggregate it uh, according to the methods that are really defined in the standards uh, and actually break, break it down to uh, the particular system you're looking at, like for example, a product uh, in the market. And I think this is kind of the most important and then obviously certain project management, communication skills and so on, because a lot of people are involved in, in conducting a life cycle assessment. You have to consult with a lot of people to ask for that data, to interpret the data, to really also work with, with them to say, okay, well, is this how the process looks like or is it different? So it's typically also not a one human uh, effort, but like uh, several people uh, in, involved. And uh, depending on the complexity of the question, the product, uh, the rules to follow, I would say like a, like a simplified uh, life cycle assessment. So where, it's, where you do not want to be like very accurate, but like have more broad results, I would say, you, well, this could probably be done for like within a month or so, like uh, like one person or like several working for for a month on, on such a product uh, project. But then also like if it's a complicated uh, system or you really want to make a comparison between two products, uh, then that can easily uh, take uh, a year or or more. Yeah, that is I think uh, about the range in in which uh, this is done. So what I see also as, as a, a general development is that or what I would also recommend to companies uh, that want to make more use of life cycle assessment is to, to really understand, okay, well, what is my objective for, for doing this life cycle assessment? Uh, what am I trying to achieve? And is that the same objective and the same question that also other companies in my sector have? And often it is, often it is about understanding the main environmental hotspots for uh, a, a typical product in, in the sector, and the products are maybe also very similar uh, across companies, then it makes a lot of sense to, to take a joint effort, uh, like, in, like as an association or like several companies together to um, implement such a life cycle assessment and to really understand the major properties of uh, of that product and then 
work with the results of that analysis to say, okay, we now we understand energy use in the manufacturing process is a major hotspot, for example, for electronic products. Manufacturing phase will be very important, the energy consumption there. And then you could say, okay, well, uh, from now on, uh, I will define that as one of the indicators I look at, um, and I will measure the, the, the type and quantity of energy that is used in the manufacturing of certain components of the product, and this is what I manage without the need to implement a life cycle assessment myself or, or continuously, like uh, or like every other year or so, but rather uh, take that effort on a on a sector level or cross company level and then uh, derive meaningful conclusions uh, from that. And then only for like uh, particular issues or very competitive issues uh, where you want to understand, okay, well, if I make this design, design decision, uh, how do, do I compare to a competitor? Uh, can I say something about it? Then uh, it obviously makes uh, sense to uh, implement uh, such an assessment your, yourself or like with the help of, of external uh, people to uh, to come to a, a conclusion there. I think there are a lot of different ways to actually implement a uh, particular like investigation. Okay, so I gather from that that half of the effort is actually in the preparation and in the definition of parameters for the assessment. Would that be accurate? Well, there we can actually make a difference between like the uh, general framework, the ISO framework, 1404 to 44, uh, where, which is more flexible and really requires the, the very good definition of objectives and uh, the scope of the assessment and so on. Uh, and there, uh, uh, indeed, a lot of uh, time goes into the preparation and certainly also data collection. That is always like a, a major block that uh, requires a lot of time uh, and can also not easily be outsourced. Uh, that should really not be underestimated. And then we have uh, like approaches such as the, the product environmental footprint uh, methods. Uh, there, a lot of the decisions that you would typically spend a lot of time on, what to include and not to include, what is the objective, uh, which impact categories to consider, these are pretty much answered, especially when there is like an agreement on in the in a certain sector, for example, for how to conduct environmental footprint analysis for milk or dairy products or for, let's say, metal sheets or uh, for uh, certain fruits and vegetables. Once the sector agrees on even like more specific rules for their products, then a lot of the decision making that needs to take place is already done. And then it becomes more standardized, a bit more practical because you can uh, really focus on identifying the the most appropriate data and perhaps the particularities of, of uh, your specific uh, product. Uh, but as it is more standardized, it, it, it can also potentially become easier than uh, like a very open assessment where you need to define a lot of the, the uh, questions as, as the first step. These standardization processes and the need for agreement uh, on definitions, metrics, and data requirement uh, that you just mentioned, I think, is not just limited to the big uh, standardization organizations and to certain sectoral contexts, but it probably also has some relevance to uh, the larger political discourse around what sustainability actually means. What we have as a reference framework uh, for the whole Global Value Project are the Sustainable Development Goals. So a global agenda that is very broad, very comprehensive and has only been around for about a year. What do you feel is the level of engagement of the LCA community with the SDGs and what do you feel can life cycle thinking, life cycle assessment bring to that agenda? So you are absolutely right that the like the major question behind a lot of the work that is done and that we just spoke about is to really define what is sustainability, what is a sustainable product, what is it not, do we have a, a, an agreement on that and so a lot of the effort that is taking place is not just like a technical 
a question, okay, well, how do we define the rules and we just agree on the rules, but it's really to come to a common understanding and a dialogue and potentially a lot of conflicts to really agree on, on what we find uh, important and not important as, um, as people, as companies, and also with regard to our stakeholders, which also may have a, an opinion, okay, well, what is really a sustainable product and what is not. And indeed, the SDGs, they uh, now provide like a global framework for a, a lot of different issues, not in just environmental issues, but also social issues kind of how we want to, to live as humanity in the future. And there are certainly efforts going on um, in companies and beyond to, to understand, uh, well, how, uh, what is my relation as an organization to these uh, very global um, uh, sustainable development goals? And uh, it certainly is also uh, an, an emerging question for the life cycle uh, assessment community, I would say. I think there's, um, it's not a, like a, a straightforward uh, relation. It's not just, ah, this SDG, we just use life cycle assessment to uh, implement it. But it, uh, what I think is the, the major value for life cycle assessment for the SDGs is that, um, for example, for SDG number 12, uh, responsible consumption and production, where specific, more specific indicators are defined, there, the question is, well, how can I, can I really understand the contribution uh, that my products or my company makes uh, to these indicators? Uh, well, what really um, makes my product more or less sustainable so that I can actually show that it re contributes to uh, that SDG? Um, and there are other SDGs such as uh, clean water and sanitation, or affordable and clean energy, or climate action, and so on, which all have a, uh, a relation to the, the, the products that we all produce and consume as, as society. They are really the basis for a lot of what we see in the SDGs as uh, requirements, even like the social ones, like uh, how is uh, prosperity distributed, um, how uh, our work conditions and so on implemented and all of these some or like many of these somehow break down to the products that uh, that we consume um, and uh, to to really make that con connection between these global indicators and my specific products uh, LCA I think can be a very helpful tool to to bridge that gap and say okay well, yes here our products really contribute to these uh, indicators here, for example, water uh, use or um, water stress, uh, and I better understand what I can do specifically. So I, I see it as an uh, instrument to like really break it down more to the, the individual uh, company and product uh, level. And I, we will certainly see uh, a lot more of, of these connections made uh, in the future. Uh, and we also have other global goals or let's say frameworks that I, I would consider uh, equally important. For example, the planetary boundary concept also uh, provides like a global understanding. Okay, where do we really like uh, go beyond the, the, the boundaries that we know provide like, a, as, a, as they say, like a safe living space uh, for humanity and say, okay, well, now that I understand that global uh, indicator what is actually the contribution of my specific product or my company when I consider the whole company, including the value chain, to that indicator? Can I do something? Uh, what is my role? How far do I need to, to change my systems to be in, in agreement and in alignment uh, with these global boundaries? And I think the SDGs uh, are, are taken very seriously by a lot of uh, companies, and they all uh, need to answer that question um, uh, for themselves. And and not all questions, but some of them can certainly be uh, well answered by uh, by good understanding, comprehensive understanding of the impact of their own products through uh, life cycle assessment approach. In the space of LCA, what would you consider the major challenges that you would hope to see resolved by 2030? What would be your vision of where LCA is headed? I think the main 
challenge, but I think also the main opportunity uh, lies in building a common understanding, definitely in each sector, on where are the hotspots of our products and where is, is our contribution to uh, like reducing our own hotspots and impacts and also contribution to uh, like uh, general objectives that you, that are framed within the SDGs and in other sectors. So to have really this common understanding because at the moment we uh, we will find that like well some talk more about uh, like climate change and others say no it's water that is important or uh, we shouldn't under, uh, forget toxicity and and then as long as there's like really not a common understanding then also the the efforts cannot be streamlined and and really scaled uh, in a in a way that we that we now need to to implement uh like certain uh, actions on a global scale so well renewable energy is a very good example i mean it's, it seems very clear but there's obviously questions are ah, well what is the real impact of renewable energy and i think from life cycle assessment standpoint we can say be very clear about it that it is uh, very positive but as long as there the questions remain it is difficult to to scale it to the degree that is necessary and i think that is a major step and then based on this common understanding really develop common indicators for a particular sector or for particular other systems to say, okay, well, this is now what we want to manage together and where we make an effort to reduce, for example, the nitrogen and phosphor flows in agriculture. We know that they are like a, um, a major, have a major impact on, on the environment and can say, okay, can we define specific indicators to uh, reduce the use or impact of nitrogen and phosphor in, in agriculture? And to, to really come to a common ground there, I think, would go a long way in achieving our, also our global objectives. Thank you for providing this vision and for joining this conversation on new developments in the space of LCA. I would like to thank you for being with us today and just announce that all of the resources you've mentioned, the standards you've mentioned will obviously also be available on this platform. I would also like to point to two tool showcases resulting from the Global Value Project that are also available at the show floor of this virtual event, namely one tool from the textile and footwear sector, the HIG Index, and the forestry industry carbon assessment, both of which build on LCA and life cycle thinking, and for which your um, elaborations have provided a perfect context. Thank you so much for joining us, Rasmus. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Norma. It was a great pleasure for me also being with you today.